Good evening, and welcome to Jerusalem Eyewitness News. I'm Rock Stone. Our top story tonight, Jesus of Nazareth has been arrested by the High Council on charges of blasphemy. The arrest came shortly before midnight in the Garden of Gethsemane, where soldiers from the temple found Jesus with his closest friends. A temple spokesman says they believe Jesus might have been plotting with those friends in the garden, but a source close to Jesus says they were only praying. Jesus is standing in trial before the high priest at this hour, and we'll have more as the story develops. Now here's a check of the weather with our buddy Martha Storm. Martha? Hey Rock, we've got a pretty nice forecast coming for this weekend. But, be but before I get to that, did you say that Jesus of Nazareth was arrested? That's right. For what? The High Council is charging... Pretending? That's crazy. He doesn't have to pretend. He is God. I've seen the miracles myself. And you're a believer? Well, sure. Who wouldn't be? Well, according to the sources down at the temple, there's a large crowd of people turning against him. Well, that just doesn't make sense to me. He's healed the sick, the blind, and the crippled. Shoot, he's even raised the dead. Who would want to arrest Jesus unless... Arthur? No, that's too crazy, even for me. What is? What if getting arrested is the plan? What if Jesus wants to be put on trial? Why would he do that? He's God. He's God's son, Rock. If he let those men arrest him, I know he has a reason. The forecast? Sure. It's going to be a nice sunny weekend all the way till Sunday. But if you ask me, something big is coming. It's not on the radar, but I have a feeling we're in for an earth-shaking event this weekend. Back to you, Rock. Oh, Grandma, how can you stand this every night? Stand what? The news. It's all bad stuff. Somebody's going to war, somebody's going to jail. Would you rather watch SpongeBob? Eric, I know the news isn't always happy, but every time I watch the news, I am thankful. For what, the commercial breaks? No, Eric, when I see the bad things happening in the world, I remember what Jesus did for us. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. He began to be sad and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. He went a little farther. Then he fell with his face to the ground. He prayed, My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want to be done, not what I want. Jesus went away a second time and a third time. He prayed, My Father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want to be done. Then he came back. Again, he found them sleeping. They couldn't keep their eyes op open either time. Then he returned to the disciples. He said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to the sinners. Get, get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas arrived. He was one of the twelve disciples. A large crowd was with him. They were carrying swords and clubs. The chief priest the chief priests and the elders of people had sent them. Judas, who was Judas, who was the man who was going to hand over Jesus, had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, he said. Arrest him. So Judas went to Jesus at once. He said, Greeting, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came to do. At that time, Jesus spoke to the crowd. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? He asked. Do I have to? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in this temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. 
But all this has happened, so the words of the prophets would come true. Then all the disciples left him and ran away. Jesus didn't have to come to earth. He chose to come. He knew it was the only way to save us from our sins. Jesus came and did his Father's work so that he could be our Savior. They came to a place called Golgotha. The word Golgotha means the place of the skull. There they mixed wine with bitter spices and gave it to Jesus to drink. After tasting it, tasting it, he refused to drink. When they had nailed him to the cross, they divided up the clothes by casting lots. They sat down and kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two rebels against Rome were crucified with him. One was on the right and one was on the left. Those who passed by shouted at Jesus and made fun of him. They shook their heads and said, so you're going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Then save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were being crucified with Jesus also made fun of him. From noon until 3 o'clock, the whole land was covered with darkness. About 3 o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. He said, Eli, Eli, Lima, Sabathini. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? After Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he died. At that moment, the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split. Tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died before were raised to life. They came out of the tombs. After Jesus was raised from the dead, they went into the holy city. They, there they appeared to many people. The Roman commander and those guarding, Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened. They were terrified. They exclaimed, he was surely the son of God. Good morning. This is Jerusalem Eyewitness News. Our top story this morning is Jesus alive. Wait. Am I reading this right? Jesus alive? He can't be alive. They crucified him, right? You don't just come back to life from that. We do? Seriously? Okay, well, um, there are people saying that, yes, Jesus is alive, and he's no longer in the grave. Sounds pretty silly to me, but I am told we have a man at the tomb with a live report. We now take you live on the scene. This is Martha Storm with Eyewitness News. I'm standing here. Martha, what are you doing down there? Get back to the studio and get ready to do the weather. Sorry, Rock. When I heard the news, I had to come down and see this for myself. He's not in there, Rock. He's risen. That's ridiculous, Martha. The dead don't just come back to life. They do when Jesus raises them to life, and they do when they're the son of God. Oh, here we go again. It's true. I have someone here who saw the whole thing. This is Jesus' friend, my pal, Mary Magdalene. Mary, tell us what you saw. He's risen. Who is risen? Jesus? Yes. And where is Jesus? He's alive. He was? Yes. He's alive, Rock. He's alive. Well, if this is true, this is big news indeed. We will keep you posted as the story develops. I don't suppose you could give us a forecast while you're standing there, Martha. It's all sunshine here, Rock. Jesus is alive. The Sabbath day was now over. It was dawn. At the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a powerful earthquake. The angel of the Lord came down from heaven. The angel went to the tomb. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. His body shone like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just like he said he would. 
Come and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly. Tell his disciples, he is now risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away to, from the tomb. They, they were afraid, but they were filled with joy. They ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Jesus rose from the grave on Sunday. He conquered sin and conquered death. Because of because he lives, we can know that Jesus is our Savior, and we can live forever with him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the general manager. You have heard the story of Jesus as best as we at Jerusalem Eyewitness News could present it. You have seen with your own eyes the empty tomb, and you have heard from the men and women who believe he is alive. As a journalist, it is my duty to present the facts and let you decide what it all means. But in this case, I can't keep silent. Folks, Jesus is alive. No, I haven't seen him with my own eyes, but I've seen the way he has changed the people who did. I know he lives, and I know he is changing my life, the lives of those who believe in him. I've never covered a more important news story in my life, and I've never made a bigger choice than this. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died to give me a new life, and I believe that Jesus can change your life too. I hope you will believe in him as well. Good night. <laughs>